Welcome to Geographical Analysis, Lecture 12, Estimation in Sampling. Recall that in general terms, with, descriptive, with inferential statistics, we are trying to use a description of a sample to make inferences about the population. So in more specific terms, suppose that we have a population and a variable describing that population, say the age of a population. What we want to know is what is the average age of the population and what's the standard deviation of the population. Those two parameters, mu and sigma, are unknown. So in inferential statistics, what we do is we collect a sample from the population, this blue circle, and for that sample we calculate the sample mean, x bar, and the sample standard deviation, s. And theory tells us that our best guess for what mu is, is that mu is equal to x bar. And our best guess for what sigma is, is that s, that sigma is equal to s. We are going to call these, um, we are going to call x bar and s point estimators of these population parameters mu and sigma. But the question still remains of how precise are these point estimators. X bar might be our best guess for what mu is, but we're not exactly sure that it's a very good guess. In this lecture, we're going to quantify what we mean by whether or not X bar is a good guess for mu. In order to do that, we are going to introduce the concept of a sampling distribution. Suppose we have a population. Let's go with the, uh, let's continue the example of, of being interested in the average age of a population, mu. If we were to take a subsample of that population, say this first subsample, we could calculate the sample mean, x bar, and we're going to put a subscript 1 here to indicate that that's the sample mean of the first sample. We can go on and collect another sample and calculate x bar 2 from that sample. And we can do this many, 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 many times. If we take all of our x bars from all of these samples that we, that we uh, took and create a frequency distribution from those sample means, well, that distribution that we get is called the sampling distribution. The central limit theorem, a theory for mathematics, states that under certain conditions, when we increase the number of random samples taken, so from one samples to say 10,000 samples, the sampling distribution that we get when we plot these sample means will become more and more normal. Now, in the real world, we don't actually produce a sampling distribution in that way. Typically, what we are going to do is for any given population, we're only going to have one sample. And we're only going to have one sample mean. So how do we know where that sample mean lies in our sampling distribution? And again, we're going to use mathematics to help us, uh, to help us decide what the sampling distribution looks like, even though we're only going to take one sample. We're not going to take 10,000 samples. So theory allows us to guess what the sampling distribution is. If we take a random sample, then we can assume that the sampling distribution is centered around x bar, and that it has a standard deviation that we'll call the standard error of the mean. We'll denote that with sigma sub x bar. So based on the properties of one sample, we're able to guess what the sampling distribution of a, ver of a statistic is. The standard error of the mean can be thought of as the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And we just calculate it as the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of the sample size. In the rare case when sigma is known, instead of dividing s by root n, we divide sigma by root n.
and we can calculate the standard error of the mean with this formula only in the cases when sigma is known.